But how long have you been doing that? If you notice that you've constantly been trying out on your own and you can't figure it out, Bonjour, bonjour! I'm Keshi and this is Let Us Learn French. Learning a language is not the easiest thing to do. Actually, it's pretty hard. But here at Let Us Learn French, we strive to make learning French a little bit easier and a lot less confusing. So here are some tips that will make learning French, or any other language really, a little bit easier and a lot more fun for you. Let's go! First, you need to know that there are four main areas that you need to work on to be able to become fluent in a language. And those are writing, reading, listening, and speaking. To be fluent in a language, you need to be pretty good at all four of those. So as I go through the tips today, I will also tell you which of those skills you will improve on by doing this or that activity. The first tip that will help you learn a language faster is to take a class or a course. If you want to learn a language quickly, for example, if you have to move to a specific country or if you're taking a job that requires you to know that skill, then it's best if you take a class or a course. You can take a language class at your school or university. For example, you can take French as an elective if you want to learn French. So there's going to be beginner French, intermediate French. And that's actually what I'm doing as well. I'm taking Spanish courses at university as electives because I really want to learn Spanish and I want to do it in a structured way. There are two ways that you can go about it and the first way is to learn it on your own. This is the long and more difficult way because you have to find YouTube channels that you like or maybe you buy some books or follow people on Instagram that can teach you that language or use language learning apps like Duolingo and that's probably what you've been doing until now and that's totally okay and that's a good way, a great way to learn especially for leisure. But how long have you been doing that? If you notice that you've constantly been trying out on your own and you can't figure it out, you, maybe you know a lot of words and phrases and vocabulary in general in French and you know how to conjugate verbs, but when it comes to piecing it together and actually making a conversation or writing a paragraph about it, then you're kind of stuck. Well, you don't have to be even with this method, but it is definitely a longer way since it is not structured and there's no one to guide you through it. But if you are already in college and you have to take electives, then why not take a French elective or an elective in the language that you want to learn? But if you're not in university or school or you don't want to take a course uh, in that language because maybe you don't want it to affect your GPA, then what you can do is take an online course. There's plenty of online courses available and if you allow yourself to spend a little bit of money on yourself, on your education, then you can learn a more structured way. Generally, classes and courses have a syllabus that you follow and they know how to guide you through this journey to learn that language a little bit easier. For example, if you're learning by yourself and you want to learn verbs, you might be really overwhelmed by all the tenses that we have, like especially in French, but if you're at school, then maybe in the first term or in the first class, they would teach you the present tense and maybe past tense, future, like the simple tenses. And maybe in an intermediate course, they might teach you the imperative or the subjunctive, or a little bit more advanced tenses that are still really important in that language. And you don't only have to take one course. You might take a course on beginner French if you're just getting started. And then you can move to taking a course on verbs specifically or then intermediate French, you know what I mean? Because I know how useful and helpful taking a course in a language was for me, or is currently for me, I was thinking of making a course myself to teach you French, maybe about verbs, since that's what a lot of people struggle with when they learn a language in general. And if that's something that might interest you, that you might want to take a course with me in the future, I have left the link in the description below for the wait list. So this is just a waitlist to let me know that you're interested in taking a course and you can email me if you have suggestions about what specifically you want to learn and if a lot of people want to learn the same thing, I might make a course about that. But as I said, for now, I have a course about verbs in mind, so that's probably what the first one will be about. You don't have to take a course with me. That's not why I give you the tip. It is actually really helpful to take a course or class in the language that you want to learn with anyone you want to learn it. 
taking a course or a class will improve all four of those skills that we talked about earlier. So listening, writing, reading, and speaking. I'm adding speaking to that, assuming that the class that you're taking, there's going to be other people and you will interact with them or the prof. So you will also talk in that language and improve your speaking. But sometimes if you take an online course, then you don't really have anyone to speak to, then you might not improve your speaking, but the other areas will improve and that's good. And actually adding on to that, number two, if you have a little bit more money to spend on it, you could also have a mentor or a personal tutor or teacher. You can have a French tutor whom you can meet on a regular basis, maybe on Zoom. And yeah, it doesn't even have to be a teacher or tutor in your region because you can just meet online and they can really guide you through learning that language easier and faster. And also they'll be here for any of your questions. So a lot of times questions are kind of personalized. So in that situation, what would I do? Or how do I figure this out or that out? And they can really be there for you personally, someone you can go to whenever you have trouble with learning French, whether it's about a specific way to phrase something or just how to learn a specific concept in general. So again, this will be a little bit more costly, but it will be a quicker way to learn that language. Keep in mind that learning a language still takes time. You're not going to be able to learn it in a week, but taking course, class, or having a tutor will really help you maybe learn within a few months instead of a few years. And if you learn by yourself, you can still learn within a few months, but it's going to take more time and energy. And also having someone to keep you accountable really helps. It helps for a lot of things, actually. For example, if you're going to the gym and you just go by yourself all the time, then maybe one day you're like, oh, I don't really want to go. But if you know someone else is there also, and then you rely on each other, then you're like, I don't really want to go, but it's fine. Like I need to be there. I will go because my friend is also going to be there. Or the person can be like, Hey, no, let's go. You're just being lazy today. So having a tutor or a teacher or friends in your class might be that gym partner. That's going to be like, stop being lazy. You did not do your homework or you did not study and you need to work hard if you want to be fluent in that language. I am also thinking of providing one-on-one -on -one coaching or tutoring um, in 2021. So if that's something that interests you and if you want me as a personal tutor, then the wait list for that is also in the description below. But again, you don't have to choose me. Just having a personal tutor or personal coach, language coach in general can really help you. If you have a personal tutor or coach, then you will improve all four skills as well listening reading writing and speaking you will probably speak in that language when you're having those meetings with your um, tutor maybe not all the time in that language since you won't be able to understand that much at the start but they will really make you speak a little bit more in that language and yeah so you will improve all four of those skills so that's really the best but those were two ways that are paid what if you don't have the money or you don't want to spend that money because you just want to learn the language for leisure just for yourself you're not interested in learning it quickly you can take your time and yeah you don't want to spend any money on it well then the other tips that i have are for you so number three is watch youtube videos you're probably doing that already but in case you're not youtube is a great way to learn almost anything especially your language and we teach French on this channel, Let Us Learn French. So if you want to learn French, you can check out those videos. And if you like it, then you can stick around for more. But even if you don't, there's plenty of other channels that can help you. There are so many videos and so many channels that teach you any language, really. And the different people have different personalities and you might connect with some more than others. You probably will. So maybe do a little bit of research and watch a few videos from a few different people and maybe even allocate a time slot every week or every few days where you would watch a couple of videos to improve your French. And then just subscribe to a few channels that you like and watch their videos. And there's tons of channels that have videos about vocabulary and also others that have videos about verbs or really grammar. And then there's channels that do both like ours. But also you can watch YouTube channels that are not about teaching you that language, but are in the language that you want to learn. For example, if you want to learn French, then you can 
first watch YouTube channels that teach you to learn French, but also watch YouTube channels about anything in general, but where the YouTuber speaks in French. If you're interested in reading for leisure, then there's the booktube community and there's some people there that speak French or the language that you want to learn. Or if you're interested in self-development or lifestyle or beauty, there's probably channels doing that in the language that you want to learn. And if you're just starting to learn that language, you probably won't understand a lot of what they're saying, but it will really immerse you in that language and help you get used to it. And with time, you will be able to grasp more and more of what they're saying and it's gonna feel great. So now, there are some videos that have subtitles, either in the language that you want to learn or in English. So definitely check if they do have the subtitles, as this will just make it easier for you to learn. But if not, you can either go to a different channel that has subtitles or try to understand what they're saying, even without subtitles. But really watch videos in categories that you're interested in. For, for example, if you have no interest at all, in cooking then don't go watch cooking videos in French because then you would kind of just get bored and you will not understand what's going on and you don't really want to know what's going on either so watch something that you really like if you like pranks then go watch pranks videos <laughs> in French or the language that you want to learn and watching YouTube videos will improve your listening skills a lot but also maybe your reading skills because some YouTube channels and some videos have either subtitles or they put words or phrases or sentences on the screen, like I usually do when I see something in French. So if I'm saying something in French, I'm assuming that you're not familiar with that word, that's why you're learning. So I'm gonna put that word or that sentence on the screen. And you can read it and listen to it, and that will improve your reading and listening skills. So it's great. We're still on the third tip. I feel like I've been blabbering on for a really long time. So I feel like it's gonna be a long video. <laughs> tip number four use language learning apps for that one let me tell you do not rely on language learning apps like duolingo or memrise or bumble bumble that's a dating app right bubble i think that's the word do not rely anyway do not rely on language learning apps they are helpful they are very useful but i feel like they are more an add-on to help you learn a little bit faster or make it a little bit more fun but don't just rely on them to take you from knowing nothing about the language to being a master in that language. I have definitely not tried every language learning apps out there, but I have tried a few ones and it was more about the vocabulary and maybe a few sentences, but it's kind of not helping you in a way. So it's not helping you grasp the broader concepts and the structures so it really does help you with the vocabulary. It's great for that. It tells you how to say a cat and a boy and a tree. But if you want to say a specific sentence that you have in mind, for example, the boy saves the cat which was stuck in a tree, then these language learning apps won't necessarily tell you that. They will have specific sentences that they will make you learn, but they will not make you grasp the language in general. To learn a language, you really need to be able to express yourself in that language. I think that's what I mean. So it's not just taking what they tell you and just throwing that out in conversations. It's about being able to make your own conversations with different things that you learned. Back to the example, if you're learning about how to say cat, tree, and boy, and if you learn how to conjugate some verbs in the present tense, then you can, by yourself, make a sentence with those. Does that make sense? <laughs> I feel like that doesn't make perfect sense. Okay, so yeah, what I'm trying to say is like, really, it's helpful. I'm not telling you to not use those. Just do not rely on those for everything. Use this and other methods. So for example, use your apps, but also watch YouTube videos and also do other things that we're gonna talk about later to help you really learn the language. So about the skills, the language learning apps will help you with reading and a lot of times listening because they tell you the words out loud, but they probably will not help you with writing and not with speaking. So I know for a few of them that it's gonna make you say the word and then it's gonna record you and tell you if your pronunciation is right or wrong or even have a writing thing where you take the words from below and then you kind of like place it in order 
to make a sentence. So you can say that it's improving your speaking and writing, but I wouldn't really consider it actually improving your speaking and writing that much. There are other ways that can help you really improve those areas better. And yeah, also it's not really going to help you with grammar that much, at least not the language apps that I've been using. Maybe you have a great one that does help you with grammar. But yeah, there's plenty of apps out there. So there probably are some that are going to help you with grammar, but mostly vocabulary I've seen. And actually, speaking about apps, a bonus is to follow accounts and groups and pages on Instagram or Facebook or other social media where you can learn French or the language that you want to learn. So like the YouTube videos, it could either be people teaching you that language or it could be about anything like gardening or cooking, but where they actually speak in, in French. So on Instagram, maybe the stories are in French or even the captions are in French or the language that you want to learn. So that will be really helpful. And by the way, if you don't follow us on Instagram already, follow us at Let Us Learn French Official because we give you a new French word of the day every single day. And if you learn one new word every single day, that's already like 30 words every month that you're learning in that language. And that's a lot of new vocabulary. And you're not only going to learn that one word, you're also going to learn other words and sentences and stuff from other methods and other platforms. But even that one additional word every single day will really help you and will not only give you those words, but also test you on them. So every day we also have like a question about a word. So we say, what does this word mean? And I give you three options and then you reply in the comments and then I will reply to your comment and I will tell you if this is correct or not. So you can keep practicing, really put yourself out there. Like there's no shame in making a mistake. Like I'm not going to be like, ha ha ha, you got it wrong. No, like it's good. It's, I'm so glad that you're trying. And sometimes people write that word in like a question mark where they're not sure they're just trying. And I'm like, great job. That's, I'm so happy that even though you're not sure of that word, you're just trying because you want to learn and that really shows that you want to learn and dedication and I really love that. But apart from our Instagram account, there's also a lot of others that you can follow and you don't only have to follow one, obviously. You follow a couple and then when you look at your Instagram, you have like plenty of new vocabulary and grammar and everything else because you're already following really educational content. So that will also really help you. Number five, speak to yourself. So yeah, maybe stand in front of a mirror and just speak in that language. Or maybe you don't even have to stand in front of a mirror. You can just speak to yourself with words and sentences that you know and learned and record yourself. It's okay to make mistakes. You do not have to be perfect. We're probably not going to be perfect anyway, and we don't have to be. Just record yourself and you don't have to show that recording to anyone else. So like, this, it's all good. Do not feel scared to do that. Just go in your room, go in a quiet place, not the library, do not speak out loud in the library, but go in a quiet place and just speak. At first it will be a little bit weird, so maybe just say a sentence or two, and then a little bit later, maybe talk a little bit more. If you know how to talk in the present, maybe say, what you see, what's going on around you. Just speak about that. And what you can do if you don't know a word, you can just, instead of stopping, you can just speak in that language. And then that word that you don't know, then say it in English and then continue on. For example, if you want to say, I like listening to birds sing in French, you would say, not sing in French, but <laughs> if you want to say that sentence in French, you would say, j'aime écouter les oiseaux chanter. But if you don't know how to say birds in French, then you can say, j'aime écouter les birds chanter. So you continue talking. And then once you're done, you can play that recording and then see if you made any mistakes or words that you didn't know, and then go back and actually check those. After you're done, after you've tried it yourself and talked to yourself, then you can go and check on Google Translate or Word Reference or I don't know, the dictionary, do people still use that <laughs> to check the word or a phrase that you might not have known? And this will help improve your speaking skills. And speaking is often the most difficult to learn or to master just because it's so intimidating. You don't want to just go and talk to people when you don't really know the language at all or just barely. So just speak to yourself 
And don't be too harsh on yourself. Don't judge yourself. As I said, it's okay to make mistakes. Don't expect to be perfect. Just try and you're going to get better. Practice makes progress. Number six, what you just did for speaking, you can also do for writing. So if you're not comfortable with speaking yet, or even if you are, you can do both. You can write down what either you've seen today, what you're seeing happening around you. So maybe go to a park and I don't know, you're seeing like children play and then dogs barking. And if you know the present tense, you can just write them down. If you know the past tense, even better, then you can write down how your day was. Even if you don't know the past tense, you can just write it in the tense that you know. But write down a paragraph. Again, start with like a line or two and then write a paragraph about either how your day was or what you're seeing or just invent something and just write it down. And while you're writing, do not take your phone and go on Google Translate to check it just because I kind of know it, but I want to just make sure. No, do not do that. I did that. Do not do it. I am guilty of doing that. I should probably take my own advice. <laughs> but no, do not do that. So actually write it down. Just give yourself like, I don't know, two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, whatever, however time you need, however much time, you, however much time, whatever time you need and actually sit down and write it. And again, at first, if you don't know the language at all, you probably just have a bunch of words there or nothing. And as you start learning and using those language learning apps to help you with vocabulary and using the other tips to help you make sentences and paragraphs and stuff, and then you'll be able to write more and more. Once you're done, then again, you can go to Google Translate then or word reference or in a dictionary if you have the time to actually go and look through the word. But yeah, you have internet. Go through it and you see if there's any words. Again, like what I do when I do that is the word, for example, bird that we talked about earlier that you don't know, I put it in like square brackets. For example, for me, I would write the sentence in Spanish since I'm learning Spanish and then put the word like bird in brackets. And then later I will go and look up how to say bird. Or if I didn't know how to say an expression or even a whole sentence sometimes, but I really want to learn it. Just put the sentence in English in brackets and then when I look at the paragraph, I know what I know and I know what I don't know yet. And then I go and Google that. So that was a kind of long explanation. But the skill that you will improve on here is writing. And you will really get the hang of writing it. And writing is also really important. For example, in a language like French, you don't always write it like you think you would. I feel like that's easier with Spanish since it's a phonetic language. So whatever you listen to it as, you will write it that way. And I love that about Spanish or other phonetic languages. But even then, sometimes I don't know where to put the accent. So even in French, it's even worse, <laughs> the pronunciation. So you really want to learn to write as well as speak it correctly. Especially if you're learning for a professional setting or for class, you really want to know how to write it as well, right? Number seven is to read children's books. So the tip is to read books in general. But let's be honest, if you don't know that language or if you just know a little bit of that language, which is why you're learning it and you're finding those tips to learn that language better, then you can't really read a whole book or a whole novel about it. But what you can do is read children's books. And there's not a lot of words in children's books. So even if you don't know anything and you end up Googling everything, it's still not that much. On a page, there's what, like two sentences? You can do it. And also there's cute pictures that really help you understand the story. So just like a child is learning the language and the book is helping them, you're also learning a language and the book will help you. And there's no shame in reading children's books. And I don't really see any disadvantages with that. And there's a couple of advantages. For example, you can get it for free if you have a library membership. So you can just take a couple of books and read them and then just return them when you're done. And then also the vocabulary, it's probably not something too, too difficult. There might be a few difficult words, but in general, it should be like easy enough for a child to read. So it's probably easy enough for like a beginner intermediate to read. Well, at least understand some parts of it. And also it's probably not gonna take you that long to read it because it's just like what, 10 pages. So yeah, I would really encourage you to read children's books and it's also pretty fun. <laughs> and the skill that you will improve here is obviously reading. But, and I will put that as number eight, I think we are, you can also read out loud and that will improve your speaking as well as your reading. So you read your children's books and 
and you can just go through it once first and read it normally like you would and really understand what it's saying, what the story is about, how the sentences are made and then you can read it again or a few sentences from it out loud and then this will help you with your speaking, with your pronunciation and so reading a children's books out loud will help you with your reading and speaking then. Number nine, watch movies and TV shows in the language that you want to learn. So if you want to learn French, watch movies that are in French or TV shows. And if you're a complete beginner, don't feel pressured to put French subtitles then. You can watch it in French but put English subtitles and you will still gain something from it. You will learn some expressions when you hear them from time to time. But if you're more intermediate level, then you can put French movie or French TV show with French subtitles and this will actually help you learn a little bit faster because you're just like really making yourself understand what it's saying in that language, really immersing yourself in it. And if you're advanced, then you can just remove the subtitles altogether and just listening to it and you would probably know what's going on a lot of the times. So you could put like English subtitles or any subtitle in your native language if it's available and then that language that you want to learn, for example French, and then maybe no subtitles. Yeah, whatever works best for you. If it's a really short video, for example, then you can maybe watch it in French with French subtitles first and then see what you understand and what you don't and then watch it again with English subtitles. But then that's kind of a lot of work. And if it's a TV show, you don't want to just watch the episode again. You probably want to move on to the next episode. And if it's a movie, then one and a half hour of not understanding things won't be fun. So yeah, that's not always practical, but that's something you could do if that's a really like short video. And you can also watch children's TV shows or cartoons or movies in that language. Maybe that will be easier as well. I haven't actually watched like Spanish cartoons, so I'm not sure how easy it is, but I'm assuming that it will help you because they're also for kids just like the books, like kids learning the language, so yeah. You could also watch your favorite TV show or movie dubbed in that language. I know a lot of people hate like dubbed movies but to be honest that's how I grew up watching a lot of movies and TV shows on Disney Channel because I didn't know English growing up but I knew French and they were dubbed in French. It was only later when I was like oh that's actually when what their voices sound like in real life and now I don't really like dubbed movies or TV shows but honestly it's not that bad and if you already know what's going on if you already like that tv show movie that's something you could do that's an option or you could also watch movies or tv shows that are in english but there's actually some french or the language that you want to learn in it for example the tv show that's coming to my mind is emily in paris and it's essentially in english but they speak some french in it or i think dora the explorer speaks spanish so yeah, again, I watched that in French as a kid because everything was in French on like Canalsat or whatever it was that broadcast Disney Channel and stuff in French. So every, every channel was in French, at least most were. Just remember that the dubbed movies or TV shows won't be as accurate. So like if you put the dubbed version and then you put like the subtitles, they probably won't match exactly. But that's, again, as I said, that's an option. <laughs> a TV show that you can watch on YouTube actually is extra. And there's the French and Spanish version. I watched the Spanish version and it was pretty good because they speak really slowly. And then you're like, oh, I understand that language. And then I watched another TV show and I'm like, no, I actually don't. But <laughs> it felt great knowing that I could understand what they were talking about. So yeah, apparently it's like Friends but I haven't watched Friends, so I'm not sure, but yeah, it's, it's really fun. You can give it a try. Nothing really exciting happens in it, but it's really good for learning French or Spanish, and it's on YouTube, so. And watching movies or TV shows will improve your listening, definitely, and maybe even your reading if you're reading the subtitles. Number 10, listen to songs in that language and read the lyrics. So again, French has an example listen to French songs and then read the lyrics and try to understand what it's saying in that song and once you've given it your best try then you can google the English translation and really figure out if it was what you thought it was. For example if you like Céline Dion or Céline Dion um, you can listen to some of her French songs and then read the lyrics and 
try to figure out what it's saying, understand the songs, and then you can even sing along. So listening to the song will improve your listening skills, reading the lyrics will improve your reading skills, or if you either sing like the karaoke version or even sing along to the song, that will also improve your speaking skills because you're really improving your pronunciation of certain words. So yeah, listening to songs would also be helpful. I would say that personally listening to Spanish songs hasn't really helped me improve my Spanish that much. I love Spanish songs, I really do. A lot of the songs I listen to are in Spanish, but I don't really try to figure out the lyrics all the time, or if I do, I kind of just like skip to English translation, get the gist of what it's saying, and then just, I really like the beat and everything. But me personally, I don't make an effort to make it help me that much, but if you actually put out the effort, then listening to songs is also a good way to learn a language or to help you learn a language. Again, don't rely on just one method. Mix and match a few of them. You, the more you actively try to learn that language, which is really like speaking and writing and reading something and not just listening to something, the more active you are about it, the faster you'll actually learn that language. Number 11 don't have enough fingers, speak to someone else in French or in the language that you want to learn. So for this one, you have to know a little bit of that language at first. This one can be a little bit intimidating. I would say the most intimidating of them all, but it's also really helpful and it's one of the best ways to actually learn. So if you have a friend who's a native speaker in the language that you want to learn, for example, French, native speaker, then definitely ask them if they could help you. You don't have to always speak that language to them if you're not comfortable. You could ask them if from time to time they could spare a few minutes to help you speak in that language. So like they would speak to you and you would speak to them in that language. And it could be in person or it could be on Zoom or FaceTime or anything really. And that will also be really helpful for speaking. And I'm assuming you want to learn how to speak fluently, not just kind of write and know how to read and really speak to someone and have a conversation and to be able to be fluent in speaking in French or in that language I'm sorry to say but you need to practice speaking and again it's the most intimidating skill to practice out of those four but if you want to be good at it you actually have to practice it practicing reading is not really going to help you speak practicing writing is not going to help you speak better you need to practice speaking so whether you speak to yourself or you speak to someone else, that's great ways to help improve your speaking skills. But I do understand that it's not always feasible and sometimes it's just uncomfortable to ask your friend because you've always been talking to them in maybe like English and then just be like, hey, I, can I speak like French to you? Like sometimes you don't want to and it just makes you uncomfortable. If that's the case, that's fine. Just either like speak to yourself or there's some apps that connect you to people where you can speak that language. For example, is it like, talky or i talk i know there's an app where you, you do pay a small fee for it every problem monthly fee but they connect you to like strangers basically so you have really nothing to be ashamed of they are there to help you speak that language and you don't really know them so even if you mess up it doesn't matter <laughs> and i will actually link that app down below and i will also link others that i think will help you so definitely check out the description below and speaking to someone in that language will improve your speaking skills, obviously, but also your listening skills, because you're also listening to that person. Number 12, that a tip that is not really talked about that much is change your phone settings to the language that you want to learn. And if you don't know absolutely anything about that language, then maybe do not, like wait until you know at least a little bit. But also if you know your phone in and out, then it shouldn't be a problem. You could just look at the icon and know this is gallery or camera or I don't know, messages. But also even like the settings portion where everything would just be in words and in that language. So for example, if you turn it in French and then you have no idea how to turn it back in English, you can just Google it. And my phone is actually in Spanish. But remember that when you do that and you turn your whole phone in that language, that Google Maps will also be in that language. And I don't know, there's probably different settings, so you can choose what you want to be in that language, but I just like everything. Put everything in Spanish. I'll be fine. I'll figure it out. 
But then Google Maps was in Spanish and it was telling me where to go in Spanish. And I don't know that much Spanish yet. So the only words I understood were like derecha, like right, or like a few other words, but like, but it was hopping pretty fast. You know how it's like, in 100 meters, turn left, and sometimes it's like, and then immediately turn right. I don't like those things, and then I was kind of like, I don't know what you're talking about right now. Yeah, so I should probably turn that Google Maps back to English, but apart from that, I really like my settings in a different language. Do you have any other tips to learn a language? What are some other things that you do maybe that help you learn French or any other language? Put it in the comments below. I'm sure it will help a lot of people. And remember, if you're interested in taking a course from me or having one-on-one -on -one coaching, the waitlist for both of those are in the description below. So I teach French. And if you're interested in learning French, put your name on the waitlist. And once it's ready to launch, you'll be the first to know. If you liked this video and found value out of it, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell notification so you never miss a video from us. We help make learning French a little bit easier and a lot less confusing. So if that's something that interests you, definitely click subscribe and the bell. I know this was a long video and I really appreciate you sticking around until the end. And as a thank you, here is a bonus for you. Be consistent and be patient and practice, practice, practice. All the tips that I talked about today are great. And you can and probably will find other videos for more tips because those videos are pretty fun. But even if you have all those videos, if you don't put an effort to actually learn that language, you won't be able to do it. No matter how many videos you watch about tips for learning a language, you actually have to put in the work. There's a saying that says that you can bring the ox or the horse or whatever animal it was to the river, but you can't make it drink the water. Well, I'm bringing you to that river with all these tips. They're bringing you to that river, but you have to drink that water. And river water is probably not that hygienic. So I'm bringing you the filtered water, but you actually have to drink it. So will you drink it? That's up to you. But as I said at the beginning of the video, Learning a language is not easy. It takes work, it takes patience, and it takes practice, but it's not impossible. Far from it. So many people learn languages every day, and why not you? Maybe you only know one language and want to be bilingual. Maybe you know a lot of languages already and want to learn one more. You still have to practice. You still have to practice all your skills, so reading, writing, listening, and speaking, and the more you practice each one of them, the more you'll be good at each one of them. Again, practice makes progress, so definitely keep on working hard towards that goal. If you got value out of this video, please share it with your family and friends who also want to learn French or any language, really. And as a thank you for sharing, here are two other videos for you. Enjoy. Thank you so much for staying until the end. I'll see you next Sunday. Take care.